in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Cup. A car which I hate, which I absolutely hate. I have a special place in hell for every Lamborghini in this sim. And below that hell lies the Super Trofeo. Why? I'll tell you. It's overpowered. It has uh, deficient aero, meaning that it's hard to drive, it's twitchy. It tends to understeer, but treat it a bit wrong or take the curb too hard and it's snap oversteer. And it's, um, how do I put it? Its steering angle is very low. In my setup, I've, I've put it to steering ratio 15, meaning one degree on the steering wheel is 15 on the wheels, in theory. Uh, but normally for a Lamborghini it's 11, 15 is for me just manageable, but that's the maximum in the, in the Lamborghini. So that makes steering a bit, a uh, bit of a chore. As you can see in my times, well, these guys are better than me. I'm here to learn, not for winning, just want a clean and fun race. Let's see where we get. And my consolation is of course that everybody is driving this terrible terrible car which looks rather good of course as you can see from the side here number six car Mark Matteo Capogrebko it's a nice car it has the all the sleek sharp Lamborghini looks so looking like a proper race car it's just that it drives like a truck why humble opinion so we did um, the driver divers briefing via discord um, just now we did a free practice of one hour of which you can see the results next year for the timetables see the fast guys over here 159 is blistering fast in this car it's really fast um, I'm 202 and well, basically, I'm happy with that. Um, it's just that others are faster, period. Nothing more than that. So, here we go. Qualifying. This is it. Just a little bit more. And let's go. As you can see already on my steering wheel, a large. It's wet. Why is it wet? I didn't. I didn't see that. Ah! Didn't notice it. Ah! Didn't pay attention. Silly, 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 silly. Didn't pay attention. This is wet weather, and I'm on dry tires. So, back to the pits in one go. Although it is cloudy. It's not raining at the moment. But still, I find this car to drive horrible. And that's in the dry. Low tire pressure, stay away from curbs. In the wet it will be something else then. Puddles, sliding. Tires cooling rapidly. The point is, this is difficult to choose. Do I choose wet weather tires? Which are probably burning up very fast. Or do I keep on slicks? But oh, I already see what slicks are doing. They're not getting warmer, they're getting colder. Uh, 
Oh, terrible. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. Naturally. Oh, this is starting good. Back to the pits. I want wet tires. And of course, some damage. Well, why not? Now let's do it proper. Just pull up a little front. And we turn to the garage, take a setup. Wet setup. I'll not do anything about this except fuel. Brakes free is okay for wet weather. Let's see what happens. I think it's fairly safe to say that Last or second to last can be expected. Patience, patience. Extremely long visual straight, which I find so cool. There's not a lot of circuits in the world anymore that have such long straights. They destroyed Hockenheim, of course, years ago, which was a master of these kinds of straights. You see the chicanes over there, that's what, what they put in for the Formula One races, which is also such a pity. Because when you put in straights like this on a circuit, then drivers and engineers have to find compromises on being faster in slower corners or being faster on straights. So if your, your car has, for instance, a, a Better engine than, well, average. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Then you'd go for the full top speed and just leave time in the corners to make it up on the straights. Well, on the other end, if you were more on the agility part and less on the speed part, then we do the other way around. So this circuit actually. I quite like it, it's difficult with all those lines and bad distinctions between track and not track. Slicks are off the okay. Terribly. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Bang. Let's go out of the way, the other guys. Tires over here, back to the garage. Terrible this.
Okay, taking a dry setup again. And otherwise I will be starting last and it will be fine. But here you see the difficulty. If, if I drive a car that I know, that I like, that I can handle, then of course in the wet is difficult. But I can manage if I drive a car that's sucky to begin with, for me at least. In the wet I'm totally lost. It becomes undrivable to me. Even with trail braking, it just does does not want to steer in or like this then it otherwise suddenly just wants to steer in way too much really terrible Others are struggling as well. Well, let's see if we can put a time down. Half the qualifying is gone. Understeer. Here. Up the steer. My God. I see this championship of four races as a learning thing because you know I, I've got cars that I really like in the sim and drive a lot and some cars I don't ever drive and it's also for me to broaden my horizon so to speak on which cars to drive even the cars that I don't like it's terrible it's normally you go flat out of this curve And it surprises me because the, the Lamborghini is a mid-engine car and I generally I have the same with all mid-engine cars. I suck at the Ferrari, which I regret because I love the Ferrari on the visuals. The other Lamborghinis... The only mid-engine car I don't suck in is the McLaren 720. Oh, 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 oh. Which to me is a very stable, very nice racing car, which I can absolutely throw around. But I'm just not fast in it. That's that's something else. I'm not fast in that, in that car. Whoopie do. The 
we'll see if we can get a bit better. Tires remain cold. So the downforce of the grip is horrendous. So taking everything a bit slower than I'm used to. But that usually rewards in better times instead of overdriving. So for me this championship is a learning curve on cars that I don't usually drive because I dislike them. But it doesn't mean that I don't want to learn them. Steer you monster. constant feeling that it doesn't want to turn in. Which I would normally expect in let's say the AMG which is a car with the engine in the front, a big engine in the front. And also under a very long bonnet. Eleven. in the middle of the car to give it a nice balance so that it doesn't oversteer and it doesn't understeer in normal racing conditions without mistreating it so to speak overdriving so why on God's green earth this thing is understeering all over the place for me not only now in the semi-wet or snap oversteer uh, you saw it is beyond me and I see this general behavior in every mid-engine car less pronounced in the Ferraris I see it in the Honda and NSX I see it in the Audi and I don't like it I love the Aston Martins also the older one Side. Too bad because it was a good lap compared to the previous one. I have to go so slow and, and trail brake for so long to get it to steer anywhere. It seems like I'm standing still in a corner. So that's also counterproductive of course. Here we go. Up. 
this is more like it. Eight seconds better. Still 12. <laughs> Doesn't make a damn. Doesn't matter. Seems to be because of the drying track, everybody is reaping the benefits of that. So we're all going faster, but relatively nothing happens. Come on, man. You. Ah, oh, shoebox of a car. Full blown understeer on a fast corner. And you're a Lamborghini, right? You're a sports car, you're fast. You're supposed to be do corners fast. Slow corners you it can't do. Can I exp at least expect fast corners to work? Nope, no I can't. That really frustrates me. Okay, what do we have? Wow, Andrea Carola 202. That's very fast. Only in a couple of laps. Then again, 202 is what I drove in, qu in free practice. So it's fast under the circumstances. Gilles doesn't even uh, bother to set a time. Behind me is Alessandro Innocenti. In front of me, Capo Greco, Puglisi, Buono, Gibelisco, Cristofaletto, Di Leo, Ciccionello, Caspric, Brufos, Caiole, and Ricci. Ricci is fastest. Okay. Half a second below that. Really fast. Okay, let's start cracking. The Lambo drinks 3.3 liters per lap. We have a 60 minute race with a lap time of around 2 minutes, meaning 30 laps. Meaning 3.3 min minus 30, not minus, 99 liters. Let's go for safe, 110. would be better.
only big question is the weather because of qualifying gives wetness clouds could well be that the race is also wet or partly wet which could be very interesting and also very annoying <laughs> This is GT racing. And nothing stops it. It can snow, it can hail, it can rain. It can have a hurricane, but the race will go on. The race will be one hour. There will be a 20 minute, minute pit window, mandatory. And in that pit window, one has to refuel tires. You don't have to care about, you can change. You won't have to change. So even one liter of fuel is enough. And a bit of a waiting list. Takes a long spell to wait now. In any case, five seconds difference between the, me and the number one is, is insanely long. Five seconds is, is a lifetime in the car racing, motor racing. So you see the guys that are attuned to this car immediately. Right. Weather, cloudy. 1822 we're going for 110 liters okay. staying on this one so the first stop will go to dry tires one liter of fuel to uh, refuel. If anything changes, I can go to wet tires, but I'll keep my wet, my dry setup, because at least the first half of the race will be dry. New tires, no grain. Brake pads number two. Steering ratio 15. This is what it will be. 110, remember the number, so at 30 minute mark it should be 55, if it's less I have to refuel more. But this seems to match. For every race briefing it's always the story to be very clean on the first lap and the first corners because it's always a shuffle on a rolling start with lots of these heavy racing machines which aren't nimble enough to just go out of the way of each other these are heavy cars and once committed to a certain line on a certain speed it's very difficult to make a move that uh, circumvents getting a crash so let's be wary and well if people turn out to touch each other in the first lap and bugger off and if you're safe and you can just, just pass them that helps a lot of course if you lose 20 seconds in a crash or a bump and you're two seconds faster than me that means that it will take you 10 laps to catch me in a 30 lap race, those are good odds. You will have a full formation lap first. So a full lap of trying to get some heat in the tires. Stay in single file.
see if the cars are okay. There goes the first barrier. This track is familiar because it's a multi layout track. They just put pylons somewhere to get a different track layout. Meaning that a lot of these pylons, like here on the corner, those yellow pylons, they can pop bumped out in the first corners, the first lap. People just take too little margin, just ram them out of the track. Which is a bit of a pity because they are actually quite good steering marks and brake marks. Try to get some warmth in. Not so worried about the rear tires because with the Lambo, all that has a lot of power, so the rear tires heat up almost too quickly, while the fronts take a bit longer. What you also just don't like about this car, because that means that your car gets different levels of grip between the front and the end from race start until let's say the third to fourth lap so every lap the car behaves differently which is cool for a sim of course and mildly annoying slightly annoying for a car that you know very well that you like because you know what to expect for me the Lambo is too feisty it's it's it behaves unexpectedly While I'm still on my Lambo rant, I dislike that it doesn't have a mirror. Of course you can put a virtual mirror on top. But I dislike that as also. I like to have it normal in the car and when you see these things. They are basically aimed at looking beside you. They are not aimed at looking behind you. So they don't do anything for you, basically. That was messy. Okay, here we go. Nearing start finish. What I do like about this car is the growls. Fantastic howling V10 engine and the pure power it has. It is a very powerful car. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Be careful. Car on the left. Clear on the left. So far so good. Survive the first corner. Car on the right. Clear on the right. right. Car on the right. Clear on the right. On the steer, on the steer.
you see the rear tires are on temperature, not on pressure, but they are on temperature already. Down on the right. Yeah, you can go. I don't care. What are you? Right. Of course. That was uncalled for. Aerodynamics is not too much because if it's aerodynamic, I lose a lot of top speed on the straight, then I'm totally lost. Oversteer, oversteer. Oh, uh, there seems to be no midway. And whatever I do on setups, I, I can't get it better on this car. doesn't seem affected by the light damage so let's see what the times do regarding that I'm in a full almost full fuel tank of course boss someone here didn't see him Shetty. Other than that, I'm 30, 40, 50 seconds behind the next one. So that kind of blows. Two or six. This here. What a dog of a car this is. Damage doesn't seem to affect my times. 206, 205 is perfectly normal with a full load of fuel. Tires are coming up good too. Let's keep at it. I hope others make mistakes. the amount of steering I need to do to just get around that corner, it's insane.
see the lift time from the other guys. But they're now, they were 15, 14, 13, and now they're 17, 15, 14. So they are faster than me. Oh well. Shetty is really struggling. He's already half a minute behind me. Guys are driving 201s. I'm driving 204s. That is. I don't understand it. I can possibly drive this car that fast. They can, and I don't understand why. It's the most annoying part of sim racing sometimes. Because I know any trick on lines, on racing lines. And on trail braking, curb use. And still. People are driving the same car. Three seconds a lap faster than me. Innocent is already a minute behind. It's really bad. 243. Can't explain but the, that he has damage, but if he has damage then just repair it then. You better take the hit in the pits on repair time than what you're doing at this point. Gets nippier, starts fast and turns out slow. Same with this one. Body car does a lot of like these corners. They start fast, but they get tighter and tighter. Cayola. Okay. He was second in qualifying. He's now in 13th. Yellow flag. I'll cheer on. Over here. As I'm basically lost. Not counting in a shitty. Let's 
it's human, that's what your other drivers are. So the vents, number one is now going towards start finish. And I'm on a 2A4. Bloody hell. At these times I miss my trusty Aston Martin V8. Which is from a car standpoint. Not the fastest GT3 car. But I know it so well, and I can drive it so well, I can push it to a limit, and I know its limits. And this thing, I, I feel... I'm pushing towards its limit, but I don't dare approach it, because... Going over it means instant wipeout. That's how it feels. Like, oh, like a Lamborghini, like a wild bull. It's inherent to the car, I don't know. A bit late. That cost me half a second. Quiet now as I'm getting into my well my zone. Here again, terrible mother of a car. Just does not want to turn in. Comparing it to other cars I drive, like the Aston Martin, like the, the AMG, like the Bentley, stomp it, turn it, it does so, and that's a front engine car, so it, it has a, a natural tendency to understeer. A mid engine car should not do this, but it's even worse than an AMG, an AMG is with its large bonnet and big engine. I think the most the understeery car in the sim. And even that I can go from that corner onto the entrance to the straight. 
full out. No issues. There's it's an intercept here already. Breakpoint. Slow car ahead. Car on the left. Clear on the left. He's now left by everyone. Yeah, he really has issues. Like I said, I can only explain that if he has damage, but why would you model on like that? Just you know, go to the pits, take the hit of the repairs, the time hit, because then you have a perfectly functioning car. Basically, he's lost two minutes now. No way his repairs will take two, would take two minutes. Maximum steer lock. I just made it. Terrible. Of course, it comes down to me driving a car like I'm used to, so I'm constantly comparing what I'm doing to. cars I love and drive the most. So that of course has an error in itself. Because you can't drive a Lambo like an Aston. You can't drive an Aston like a Porsche. And you can't drive a Porsche like an AMG. Over a lap time, these cars may be homologated to be just as quick as each other. But naturally, a big front engine car like an AMG will behave differently on certain parts of the track than a Porsche will, with its smaller but back engine, rear engine setup. We really have to wrestle this car. On one hand, I'm inclined to just go and pit. On the other hand, I'm distrusting the weather. If I go now and 10 minutes before the end, the rain will come. No, it doesn't matter, because I still have to pit. We have now 80 on board. So I burned 30 in 20 minutes. That's 60 in 40 minutes and 80. I'm way over overfueled. But okay. That doesn't matter. Because I'm slow anyway. I would be even slower without fuel. I'll just go ahead and pit. And be done with it. Six seconds on the suspension and bodywork? Oh yeah, why not? It's only light. Maybe it will save me some. What's this? Let 
Mandatory stop cleared. Slow car ahead. Cayola over the end. I guess he must have had damage too. Yellow flag, yellow flag. Be careful there. Ah, Mr. Innocenti. This bad day is just getting worse. My god. I think if we put this on a straight track, let's say a straight line from Berlin to Paris, something like that, it would win hands down. Because its power and acceleration are quite okay. Corners, not so much. Feels like a truck. I have to be a solid notion that any other car I can just flick around. Break point. beauty of this track, no gravel traps, if you make a mistake it's just more tarmac to use, and though if you gain time of course you'll get penalized, I was actually amazed that I didn't get penalized in that one, but I think I did gain some time. Got the number one already behind me. I'll expect blue flag soon to get out of the way. Here. This guy either knows his car very good or he has some setup that works very well for him. He 
is so much faster than me in the same car. Insane. Okay, number two coming up. I expect some blue flags to come in. A couple of laps. Due to my early shot and of course my early pit stop. And here comes the oversteer again. Which puts me at the wrong point for entry on this turn. straight flat and I arrive at 204 Take track limits if the thing doesn't want to steer. Leo is approaching. Again, track limits. It's amazing how it's me, of course, because I, I'm not able apparently to anticipate its lack of wanting to steer in. Uh, 
there'll be something for my home race next week, Zandvoort, the Netherlands. It's a slow circuit with lots of corners. It'll be interesting to see if I can ever even drive this thing over there. in the drive. And again, terrible. <sighs> I'm really fighting this thing. guys didn't even have to pit yet. All they have to do in the next five minutes, so that's this or the next lap. God damn. Watch the train in this and, and, and it doesn't move, you know, when I went with the, with the cars that I like, I've improved a lot in the past few months. But when you're driving a new car and it does, doesn't get together, to me it's highly annoying to see people drive the same car four seconds a lap faster than me and I'm bringing everything out of it that I can, that I can find in here I'm not in some Sunday stroll faster car approaching, watch out yeah, could be It's all the top guys are in the pits now. Sure, why not? I'd be surprised if there's even one valid lap in this whole race.
and the gun. Too late. That doesn't help, of course. This is the breakpoint. There was the overseer again. See, they're gonna get getting tired fighting this car. Absolutely, fight with this bitch. You see, they're gonna start making mistakes. Opposite locker. Just barely makes the corner. I don't remember it being this bad in Monza, the last race. And we ran it off. Almost again. Overstay crash. Everybody's a bit spread out. It's not a close race.
Sure are you. Number one is gaining up on me again. Three and a half seconds behind. Number 13, 24 seconds above. Okay, that may be healthy. I don't see anyone in front of me dropping in times. So whoever it was that caused the yellow flag, there's no sure where your track limits. Shit box. Fucking shit box. Well, number one won't be happy with me.
Out of bounds. so annoying to have either understeer or oversteer it's 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 really bad handling car on the left clear on the left understeer out out of into a corner and then oversteer out of it it's so annoying I'll do a uh, doing a series of car impressions with this. Uh, Slow car ahead. I think I'll do a car impression on the Aston Martin V8 tomorrow, or soon at least. Let's see how well behaved that one is compared to this box of shit of a car. I have no other words for it. It's just terrible. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Tomorrow, there's also another race. RCI. Barcelona, I think. Fast car behind you. Sure. Oh, we stay on the steer there, oh, too. Stop that. Here Anthony proposed the number five or number four is now on overtaking me on, on the straight. So these cars are basically evenly matched with speed. Clear on the left. So it's just corner exit. They have mastered something I haven't on this car. Cornering speed. Of course, slow in means fast out. But I don't feel I should go slower. That's the feeling I have with the car. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Like trying to approach a boundary, the, the, the limits of the car, but they're 
They're ever present, and when you cross that limit, it bites hard. So I, I lack trust in it. It's either understeering or oversteering. It's I lack the trust to really push. But anyway, tomorrow RCI race in the Aston Martin V8 at Barcelona. I'll not be fast there, of course. I'm a fair driver. At yeah, best. But at least that's in a car that I know and trust, which I know the limits. which has a predictable driving experience based on my inputs as a driver. Now I'm on lower fuel, 33 left. Like so that's basically qualifying amount. So I should be doing 202s, 204, 203s. Because that's what I'm capable of with this car in qualifying trim. And I don't use specific qualifying or racing setups. But that's cool. It does have an amazing sound does have very good speed and acceleration. I'll give it that. Left.
really feel my concentration is uh, waning now. Backstory of this is that I'm going through a home renovation at the moment. So next to working at home with the whole COVID situation. Indeed, the past three weeks have been nothing but dust and noise and dust and noise. So that doesn't help while racing in the evening. But for the most part it's just fighting this car. It's really a fight between driver and car. Not one moment do I have the inkling of that this thing behaves exactly like I want it to do. This terrible. How can you make this stuff up? You can put the wheels in full lock and it will still just meander straight on, slightly to the sideways. was it second race like I said this championship and driving it to get these mid-engine cars to know better but to be honest I don't feel I'm progressing anything I'm just it's just depressing never do I have the feeling that I'm in control on this car maybe on some Ford but not on this place so a lot to ponder um, thanks for watching. Um, tomorrow RCI race, Aston Martin at Barcelona. And I'll do some car impressions again this week. Plan to do them for all cars that are in the sim at current. And then next Thursday, uh, Trofeo race again at Sandford. Thanks for watching again. See you soon. Bye bye.